This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. Yay! Jim, are you here this week? Uh, I'm Jim. There you go. Not Blake. Not Blake. We <laughs> don't. We, he went to look in the crown, and we don't know where he's at. Yeah, he wandered off again. So I understand why people don't know if he's real because I'm starting to doubt it myself. <laughs> no, he is. I've met. No, he was kidnapped by gypsies. Ooh, I like gypsies. Uh, with yeah. us, right well, that English voice you heard was not Jason doing an English accent. It wasn't of us. Thank you. I am uh, Michael Caine. I'm a man bag. You can do better than that. No, I can't. can't. <laughs> do, do your impression. Come on. Do, your impre- do my impression of you? You do. Of me? No. No, no. You're, you're Michael Caine. No, 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 no. <laughs> What's that? I thought it was an impression of you. No, no, no. Is that British? No. Well, if I say no, 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 that's American. No, 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 no. No. That's what is that? That's, that's British. British. I feel like that's what I sound like. Your impressions are worse face to face. I had no idea if that was even possible. This is Kevin from 365 Flicks Podcast. Uh, he's here. Um, I'm trying to think what else I could say. The size of a tangerine. I, I, is that Australian? No, yes. Yes. <laughs> Does it sound Australian? Not really. But okay. It sounded closer to Australian than British. I'm going to Australian then. Flies of a tangerine. Size. Size of a tangerine. From Batman? No? Yeah, that's terrible. Rubies. Is that, well, now you're putting me on the spot. I'm a little a tired. Size of a tangerine. We've been podcasting all day from the expo, so I'm a little exhausted, okay? You know? Yeah. Ground that, pretzel. I don't understand Ooh, how... Ground pretzels. I, there's a pretzel on the ground over Do there. not eat the pretzel <laughs> on the ground, people. Okay, so, Kevin is going to play some trivia here. Damn. And, uh, my phone works here. Uh, I got your phone up, Jim. What are we doing? We're doing trivia. Well, what type of trivia? It is movie trivia. M- movies. Are that we doing the timers? The movies that begin with the letter Q. I like Name that. five of them. No, don't do that. <laughs> Name five. <laughs> Quiz show. That's it. That's all Quiz show. Talking. That's it. I'll call it Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace. Now I'm out. Queef. Who was it? Qu- queen. There's got to be things. Queen. The Queen. The Queen. The queen. Yeah. That's three. What's that? There's got to be like a quest something. The queen starts quest for fire. It's still a Q in there. Quest for fire. Quest galaxy. Start with the letter Q. No. Oh. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff, you ready? We got the timer. Oh, let me get my timer. Is it timed? No. Oh. I've got a drink, man. Uh, you got. Right. Timer's ready. 60 seconds to name five. Meryl Streep films and go. Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. Huh? River Wild. Oh, yeah. No, that was Hell Not. No, that was Meryl Streep. That was Meryl Streep. River Wild. Um, eh? Kramer vs. Kramer. Right. Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep. Oh, shit. Sophie's Choice. Sophie's Choice. Find someone else. Um, another one. One more, one more, one more. Got time. Mm, you got 40. Death Becomes Her. Yes. What was it? Death Becomes Her. Death Becomes Her. Prada. Everyone's no, Prada. And by the way, nobody helped me there. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, one. Those mumblings you heard behind him was no one helping him. It was Jason's impressions. You should have said Ricky and the Flash. Name Ricky and the Flash. Mill Street's good though. Okay, you ready? You ready? That's one. 
You got 60 seconds. Name 100 Kevin Bacon films. <laughs> has he done 100 movies? How many movies has he done, Jim? Oh, uh, let's check. <laughs> 100. Oh, it's only done 86, surprisingly. Okay, name 85. <laughs> Right. Now, is that movies or just appearances? Those could okay, be fine. Movies. I'll bring it down to a Name 35 movies of Kevin Bacon in less than a minute. <laughs> That's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> I can name three. It's not right that he's in 86 movies. Okay, <laughs> ready? Oh, he's amazing. Name five. Have five. you seen the following? Anyways, the TV show. <laughs> okay, name five movie Kevin Bacon movies in 60 seconds or less. Go. Stare of Echoes. Good movie. Um, That's what. Um, Kevin Bacon. Uh, Tremors. Good movie. Was, Tremors 2. He was in Tremors 2, wasn't he? Was no. He? No, he was not in Tremors 2. No. Uh, Kevin Bacon. A few good men. Uh, shut up. Um, um, oh, Kevin Bacon. You only got 82 other movies to pick from. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Flatliners? Yes. Yes, he was. That was good. Oh, cool. That one. We would have, have taken the River Wild, too. Oh, <laughs> 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 See, that, that was the next one. <laughs> Who else we got there, Jim? Was that, he was in Flatliners, wasn't he? Yeah, he was yes. in Flatliners. Yeah. He was in a lot of those at that time. Because he's awesome. Did, did we not get uh, Footloose? I yeah, he did. Oh, oh, I, yeah. Missed him. I missed him say that. I'm bad. Animal House. <laughs> okay. He was, yes. Animal House, yeah. yeah. Name... Did, one, did everybody else get this, like, name five movies? Oh, yeah, Jeff, Jeff Morris did. Right. He lost, okay. bad. Scam Jeff. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, horrible. He was slightly tanked. <laughs> name, in 60 seconds, name five Al Pacino movies. Go. Uh, Devil's Advocate, Set of Women, um, uh, City Hall, oh. um, uh, Godfather. Yep. Godfather 2. There you go. Okay, that's and three. Wait. Yeah, why? That's three. Okay. I'm a terrible movie fan. In 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Name one John Lovitz movie. Go. John Lovitz. High School High. Damn it! <laughs> That's the only one I knew. <laughs> That's the only one you knew. The only one I knew. When she Oh, she wasn't, he wasn't around. When they're sampling the papers to the condo. <laughs> great, great film. Great film. Okay, okay, we got one more. You've won four. You've won for the five. And we're running out prizes for the five. Do you get Jersey? Don't you dare touch a Fisto. Yeah, I want you a new Fisto. Best courtesy of Chris from 365. We appreciate that. That can is I, one in the Hobie, the Bob Studios. Can I have a llama toy? You cannot have a llama toy because they're all been bought <laughs> by Scam Jeff. 99 movies for John Lovitz. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm wedding credits. Credit. Credit. not all movies. He was in Wedding Singer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, He's in Can stuff. you do this? <laughs> okay, so we got one last one. I got to get a good one. He's losing his mind. Director. Name. <laughs> Do a director. In 30 seconds, name the best Christopher Nolan movie. Dark Knight. Huh? Dark Knight. To be fair, he's a terrible director. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going to go with the Dark Knight because everything else sucks. I was going to be wrong. <laughs> I was going to say Interstellar. Ah, <laughs> uh, shut up. <laughs> but I will accept Dark Knight. Well done. Well done. Well done. How many did you get? You had five out of five. Oh. You got the Star-Lord car. That is a picture of me. It is a picture of you. You do look like it. <laughs> I'll be honest. The plane ride has not done you justice. The star, you look exhausted. The Star-Lord even have a car. <laughs> that was set in space. <laughs> What is the purpose of a Star Lord? Did you car? buy a knockoff car to give to people? That would be from Kirsty from number one fan Doug. It's knockoff, isn't it? Well, it's, it's a Hot Wheels, no. which is the I premier. I'm out money to buy gifts. <laughs> I'm going through my closets. Hey, 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 hey! It is pretty cool, though. Uh, yeah. Well, I can't give you a movie because you know, you're, because of customs, or you know, it won't play over there. Come on, get your electronics right. Hot Wheels. I have some VHS tapes. You want one of those? No, because they won't play right. <laughs> John, Lo- John Lovett's movies. <laughs> I think I did have High School High on VHS. Wow. I think. I'm not sure. I bought a lot of crap. Not oh, sure. Oh, my God. Is that Blake back? Blake's back. Blake, sit down here. No. Come on down, Blake. Oh, oh, you sit. Nailed it. I've been sitting all day. 505. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, thanks, Kev. Wonderful. Okay, I have to send a disclaimer for you to use my voice. Start talking. 
<sighs> do you want to sign a disclaimer? Okay, good. Are you still stuff. recording? <laughs> Can we still yeah, use yeah. it? Awesome. Some cosplayer came up to me before, dressed as Star Lord, right, and asked if they could have a picture taken beside me. You're not in the outfit. I wasn't even in the outfit. That is how damn sexy you look as Chris Pratt. Abs. Do you do have the abs of him? No, I don't. You do. You do. As Jeff says, I have the Andy Dwyer abs. <laughs> you know, Chris looks like a very good rocket raccoon, so that's good. Yeah, you do a little bit. You do. A little scruffiness. I like it. I like it. Especially in the second one when they're going through the, the jump portal. Yeah, and they're changing the face. Yeah. I feel like Chris is going to punch you. It's been coming. Wait, would you like a llama? We have llamas. <laughs> And we're here with Robin. Welcome to the Thank podcast. You. Yes. You're going to do superhero trivia. And Jeff is going to start you off with the first one. You need to get three right. Okay. Uh, if you get all five, we'll, uh, we might have something better. Okay. But you want at least three. I get a high five. There you go. All right. And you get to pick from the creepy bag. Oh, dear. All right. First question. Who is the defender of Kun Lan, sworn enemy of the hand? Oh, Iron Fist. The more Iron Fist because he gave me his card. <laughs> so, well done, Jeff. Yes. Sweet. That's one. Man, I was, that was I don't know. I was scared about that. I was like. <laughs> okay. Justice Superman has been known by other names, so has Batman. For this question, can you find the one name that has not been traditionally associated with Batman? Not. Okay. World's Greatest Vigilante, The Dark Knight, The Cra- Cape Crusader, World's Greatest Detective. It's definitely it's definitely the first one, don't you think? World's Greatest Vigilante? What was the question again? Which one has he not been known as? World's Greatest Vigilante, The Dark yeah, Knight. Yes, the, it, he was never, he was not the World's Greatest Vigilante. Is that your final answer? Yeah. We're going to see. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like... Yeah, no, no. Oh, really? Batman protects what's it? No. Okay. <laughs> the I never next one. Said the other three were so definitely him. Yeah. Like, okay. 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 What city does the Flash protect? Oh, uh, Star City. That's that is Star incorrect. That is, is Arrow. Arrow. It's Central City. It's Central City, isn't it? Is it Central City? Central City. Central City. Can I change that? No. Nope. We're going to go with Central City. <laughs> nope. Oh, no. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it was Star City. It was the Flash. Was what was that? We got two I'm out of three so far? Two out of three. Two out of three. All right. In the Spider-Man movies, the ungodly amount that they've rebooted, yeah. name two actresses that have played... Actresses, okay. Mary... Uh, I'm sorry. Mary... Mary <laughs> Aunt May. Aunt May. Aunt May? Yes. Actresses that played Aunt May? That's a hard one. Uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, that's not, that's not... She's not a superhero. That's not... Yeah. Emma Stone. No. It, just, just oh, one. Just get okay, one. Okay, do one. Do one. I can't do one. I don't even know that. Aunt May. Aunt May did not play Aunt Man. Ant Man. No, that's the one that Spider Man lives with. Peter Parker. His, his I, aunt. Aunt. I mean, I know Aunt May. I don't know the actresses that played her. Ma. Yeah, I, I don't know. Ma. Maria. Ma- Margaret. Marissa. <laughs> Marissa. That is not correct. Marissa Pony. Okay, fine. Well, Marissa Tomei? Marissa Tomei was the correct. Marissa Tomei. Sally, Sally, Sally Field. Field. No. Sally Field. And the other lady who was named by the... I, I, I am okay. about actresses, yeah. So this is the fifth one. Central City. Gosh darn it. Okay, go ahead. This is the fifth one. All right. Na- uh, of the original Batman trilogy uh, with Michael Keaton. Are you too young for that? Or have you seen them? Uh, there were four of those. Jason. Four of those. Sorry, there's four. Are you too young? If so, that's all right. I don't know. I, uh, okay, fine. Uh, we'll do. Okay, Spider-Man. Okay. That's more there. Okay. Of the Spider-Man movies, all of them, name three villains that have, been, that have appeared. Okay, Green Goblin. Yeah. Uh, the Octopus, Mr. O- Octo, uh, Doctor Octopus. There you Oct- go. Octopus, and. Uh, There's no bats. Okay, no birds. Stop, stop, stop. Actually, well, the most recent one was the vulture, even though... There you go. That That works. What was that? That That was actually the original villain that he fought against was the vulture in in, in Spider-Man 1. I knew that one. Okay. So you get the creepy bag. Okay. Don't oh, my heart. Uh, It's it's like snakes. Bees. Bees. Don't pick the bees. Okay. (laughs) Spider-Man! 
Well done. I mean, it might as well be uh, the worst one. <laughs> That's the one with Doc Ock, isn't it? It is. It has like so. It is a long definitely, one. Isn't it? Cla- oh no, the third one's the worst one. Yeah, yeah, third, third one's the worst one. All right, good job. Well, good thank job, you. Okay. Thank you. That was loads of get- fun. Yeah. We've had a lot of uh, trivia today, Jeff. We have. And some people have won some fabulous, in air quotes, prizes. I feel like the Sorority Boys might be the best DVD. Yeah, especially when you tried to give it to the person who was too young to win. That's why we put it back in the bag. Put it back in the bag. Uh, Jim's still here, and Blake is still here. Hey, Blake! Hello. Did you reboot him? He's working now, I think. Good, good. Blake, uh, did you see anything when you walked the floor? Did you buy anything? No. Are you going to? No. You bought, like some, to? you bought some warm nuts. Yeah, I did. I bought some uh, cinnamon <laughs> baked cashews. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done, Blake. Usually, uh, yeah, yeah. I like to see if there's any good t-shirts. I usually like to buy t-shirts from place, you know, places like this, but I, I, nothing jumped out at me this time around. I did find a shirt that I wanted to buy for you. Uh, I just can't justify the cost right now. You always tell me that wrestling is fake. I got a shirt for you online that said football is fake. Oh, and I think I'm, I might What's get funny that. about that? Yes, it is fake. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine, Blake. Uh, let's see. Uh, Blake, here we go. We got some things for you. All right. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Did you enjoy the season? Opportunity predictions for the next season. Up, down for the season. Uh, up for the season. Down for the season. My ups. All right, I'll tell you what my ups were. I, okay. I like the storyline. I like the plot. It advanced it quickly. You know, the downs are, you know, everybody was on speed, time travel. But, you know, what can you do? They were all faster than the Flash? It, 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 you, you could tell, you could tell they're, they're in the last two season, and they're trying to wrap things up as quickly as possible. So a lot of things that they could extrapolate on and, and make a good storyline to, they immediately jump to conclusions. And they spit it up that way. And ultimately, I would have liked to have the books been done first so I can read, but oh well. Well, don't worry, because the books are going to be nothing compared to... Oh, yeah, they're going to be completely different. They're going to be completely different in this season because they lost their way. Yeah. Did you see George R. R. Martin here? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I I can't remember we talked about it before, but yeah, there's a guy that looks exactly like George R. R. Martin, including the sailor hat and cane, and I asked him if he was George R. R. Martin. He said, no, I'm not cosplaying George Martin. Then why are you dressed like him? Exactly. Well, I, I asked him, what he, I asked him what he was doing here. He should go home and finish the books. Maybe that kind of upset him. <laughs> I don't think he had the suspenders, though. It could be George Martin. No. He wouldn't wear the suspenders. George always wears the suspenders. He's creepy. Well, maybe he got a belt. He's creepy. <laughs> a belt. <laughs> Jim, Jim, what do you think of the last season? Uh, I think my downs are the entire... Uh, getting saved at the last minute on every episode where like oh we're in deathly peril we're all going to die and then of course somebody uh, time, tra- tra- time travels space there, gets yeah. there and How's just nick a time and saves them dos ex machina dos, dos ex machina yeah yes. did you enjoy the season oh, it, was, it was enjoyable are you ready for the season to be over the series uh, I expected it to go a few different ways and everything but I, I'd like to see how they wrap it up how do we think it's going to be wrapped up? Do you think it's going to be a happy ending? It's all a dream. If it's all a dream, I will stop reading uh, <laughs> and watching science fiction and fantasy altogether. Okay. It'll be it'll be interesting to see. I could easily see, from what I understand, the uh, the producers they're they're actually filming multiple endings. Yes, to, for leaks. You know, in order to stop leaks and all that kind of stuff. So. And they're, they're probably thinking of any possible outcome, but it would be interesting to see which one actually gets the play. What I just hope is that they put the uh, all this film or all the scenes they film onto like the, the DVD Blu-rays or whatnot, so you can see what they did. Yeah, so it could be like the ending of like Clue. Oh, exactly. actually, you know what they should do, depending upon your geographical location. 
<laughs> so it's HBO. They should have simultaneous endings of Game of Thrones, and depending upon where you're geographically located, dictates which of the endings you actually get. I think everybody would go nuts. So that universe would be insane. insane. Oh, that would that be, would be the yeah, over best thing to do. England has a different ending. East Coast U.S., West Coast U.S., all different endings. One just fades to black. I, I heard that one that end up be... all in prison. Hey, it's the Psy Guy. <laughs> Big yeah. Dev. Big Dev is back. How you doing, Dev? Oh. There's I'm ready good for stuff. more beer. <laughs> more beer and chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Yeah, we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to Taste of Belgium. Taste of Belgium. Oh, good okay. choice. Yeah. You the, one, the one over the right. N O T R. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good luck getting in. Well, you can go down to the banks. <laughs> you can take the streetcar in Cincinnati. The yesterday. Take the streetcar in Cincinnati. No one else is. But you could. <laughs> Are you sure? I Just can... people from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Buy tickets. Uh, the best is that our UK buddies came over and they said, what's that thing that goes around the block? That's a streetcar. <laughs> goes in circles. Three miles. Three miles. Yes. Bye. That seems like a very small service. And it, it's 3.8, I think. 3.4. Oh, yeah, that's the exact length of the track. Yeah. But you're connecting like a mile and a half to a mile and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you go out and come back on different tracks. So, yeah. It's terrible. It does sound terrible. It does sound terrible. It but is they're, terrible. They're, they're it costs they're $100 million. Of dollars. They yes. want to expand it, even though it's failing. When are they expanding it? I don't know. They want to take Walmart? it up to Clifton. No. Whenever they can find a way to pay off the debt they went in to build to what they have already. When they raise your taxes in order to pay for it. I don't live within the so, city limits. So I've got an important question for you guys. Okay, important question. Is Ohio a place where you can buy beer at the gas station? Yes. 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 I, I sort of love this statement. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you is, can't? And no, no. In Michigan, we can buy liquor, no. beer, everything. Uh-huh. Hell, oh, we can't get liquor at the gas yeah. station. The kids come out with liquor. But uh, what, Tennessee and uh, Georgia? I think Illinois has... Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pennsylvania is only uh, liquor. You yeah. have to go to a uh, box liquor store. Got to go to a brown bag store. Yeah. Uh, you you can terrible. buy, I suppose, real uh, light liquor at the supermarket. Yeah, like, I think under 42 proof. 42 proof or less at the supermarket. Like Schweppes. <laughs> Schnapps. <Schnops>. Whatever. <laughs> Schnapps. <laughs> For 42 proof vodka. Southern Comfort and all that. Cool 45. But any, anything good, that's like 17%. <laughs> well, but, uh, I mean, at least I can buy beer. Yes, you can buy beer. Part. Yeah. Or if you go across the border to Indiana, you can buy warm beer at the... <laughs> but you can't. they can't sell it cold. Well, if I'm going to go across any border, it's going to be into Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> ever says that. You go into Kentucky and you can buy your... Uh, your grain alcohol. alcohol. Your grain alcohol through a drive-thru. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Right, you know, right across. Just go right across the river, and you go down to uh, Honey like three or four different. Uh, even if you go to like Covington, there's three or four different stores right there. Off. And yep. I'm glad I hijacked your podcast. <laughs> That's all right. That's yeah. all right. We can have hijacked uh, Jack on our own. Since you're here, we got some really traveling it on your own. Shut up, <laughs> Jason. Decided to hijack it, Jack off on his own. <laughs> Dev, I got some Michigan questions for you. All right. Okay, you ready? Yep. What's your favorite Great Lake? Oh. Nope, you can't do that. That's a cop out. Uh, Not Ontario, because it doesn't touch Michigan. Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan. Oh, shocking. What's the worst city, Detroit or Flint? Oh, Flint by a mile. Okay. What's the better city, Flint or Beirut? Beirut. True or false? Your water has lead in it. True. Okay, just checking. Thank well, you. not my specific water, Okay. I guess. <laughs> and yet you feel Michigan's better than Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Well, I get well water, so I'm fine. This oh, is high in iron content. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> and mercury. I thought, iron, I thought irons and minerals were good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Builds character. Iron. 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 <laughs> Well, I, I hope you enjoy the waffles and chicken. Yeah, Taste of Bells yeah. is pretty good. Is there anything you want to promote? Uh, well, you know, the uh, snake oil. Do you guys still do that? 
that? <laughs> the Snake Oil Industries, which is just one podcast at, at this <laughs> point in time. <laughs> Uh, well, no, Snake Oil Podcast, as always. And Shot of History. Ah, uh, fuck that show. Okay. <laughs> no, Shot of History is it's great. We, uh, and, uh, I've, I've had to do some uh, some actual research recently. Wow. Hey, Wikipedia doesn't count. I, it's not all Wikipedia. <laughs> I went to the he uses women's, Bing. He I went to the Bing. Women's Air Force Service Pilots webpage and did some research from there. You know, Blake's in the military. You could call him. Yeah. Not call him because he's a robot, but you could text him. He's in the Navy, and this was more Air Force. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is there a difference? Oh, big. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, how do you, how do you come up with your uh, topics for Shout of History? Is this what you guys fancy on? or, or? Uh, A lot of the stuff that I come up with is just what uh, interests me. So probably next time we record, I think I'm going to do uh, about Hitler and the Third Reich and uh, methamphetamines. So it's a very uplifting yeah. show. Yeah. It's going to be super uplifting. Okay, great. Yeah, great. I'm sure Blake's going to love that one. Yeah. All right, we, we, we touched a little bit on it about uh, drugs in history and certain yeah. events that they actually had out, outcomes on. Yeah. You know, it's pretty interesting when you really start to look at yeah, some things Hitler that... Yeah, wouldn't his- have been a doped up uh, meth freak, uh, we probably would have lost the war. You know, stuff, you know, interesting stuff like that. So you can yeah. blame the meth issue on him. Yes. It yes. all goes back to Hitler? Yes. Okay. It all goes back to Nazis. <laughs> yes, always goes back to Nazis. <laughs> Do you ever stop at like, well, no, you get, don't, because you've done history all the way back thousands of years, too, didn't you? You've done uh, topics and that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. How about Vlad the Impaler? Can we do something on him? We did do an episode on Vlad the Impaler. I missed missed that one. Uh, You missed them all. You don't listen. I do listen, uh, actually. (laughs) I think Trico actually did that one. So we probably just said Vlad a couple of times. I did a bunch of dick jokes. Okay. Good call. (laughs) call. I probably didn't miss much. So it was more the shot than the history in that episode. Ah. More shots than history that episode. If Vlad the Impaler can't turn you on, what can? Nazis, Nazis, Nazis. Nazis. Yes. yes, Nazis and beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to be here tomorrow? I haven't made the determination yet. I don't okay. know. Maybe. Are, are you staying in the streets tonight? Are you in a yes. hotel room? I'm going co- to cozy up to some hobo tonight. Jeff has a spot. <laughs> Jeff, you have a room. I do have a room. You go. Oh, I think I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna stay. It's like 40 minutes north of here. Oh, okay. Some some people Travis knows. You will do everything in your power to get out of Cincinnati, won't you? <laughs> yes. I would do everything in my power to get out of Ohio. <laughs> well, you only have to go uh, about 80 yards south, and you That's can get true. out. That's true. Yeah. Well, maybe a little farther than that. It's about a half mile from here. Half mile. Yeah. Just jump in the river. You're in Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky owns the Ohio River. There's a little shot of trivia for you. Yeah. Hey, Blake. A little shot of trivia. They don't own the entire river. Yeah, except for the little coast. Yeah. <laughs> the little coast. Uh, we all got hugs earlier, Blake. You missed it. We got hugs from Dev. I got my own personal hug when yeah. with him and the 365 guys. Group hug? Yeah. I missed that. Exactly. Is that when you were in the green room? No. The green room over there? That's when we were at the beer table. Yeah, the green room. Yeah, the, the green room. room. Green room. Yeah, we were yeah. talking earlier. Everybody that left our show went over to the green room table, <laughs> drank, and then came back more inebriated, and then left and came back again. Well done. Well done. I don't think Jeff Morris was inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen to our Christmas show? <laughs> Did you listen? Let me ask you this, Jeff. Now that you've met Blake, what are your uh, thoughts? <laughs> I am shocked that he's a real person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no Not longer the snuffleupagus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, uh, it was really nice to meet him. Yes. He's, like he's a whole lot better than uh, <laughs> some other people on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he was pointing towards Jason. Just Why? To what did Jim do to you? <laughs> Jim? <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, but I'm the only one that bought uh, comics from you guys. That is true. Yeah, see? That is see? true. There's uh, another buttercup. Another buttercup. Uh, I'm not going to scream. We're recording. I know. Yeah. Every time buttercu- the idea. buttercup that came by, Jeff and uh, uh, we started booing. Because it was the, <laughs> the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boo. Boo. Bow before the queen of refuse. The queen of putrescent. Boo. <laughs> Uh, do you have any thoughts on Game of Thrones, Dev? Nope, don't watch it. Good man. Okay. Oh, wait, well, no, actually, uh, with that, I should say the uh, the Neil review. It's great. I love it. Five stars. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, okay, last thing here. Preacher. Your thoughts? I, uh, I saw the finale. I have not, but go ahead. You can still talk. No, go ahead, Dev. I, I, what I've watched so far, I think I've still got uh, five or six episodes okay. to catch up on. Uh, but I love the hair star character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of like what they're doing with Hitler and Eugene. And oh, my God. Yeah. It was uh, pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, no, I mean, all, overall, I mean, it's clearly uh, not directly out of the comic. No. And uh, I'm really actually enjoying it. And you read the, book, the books, right? Oh, yeah, I okay. read all the way through. Uh, I really enjoyed the uh, the graphic novels. Uh, it, Those are probably my favorite graphic novels I've ever read. Yeah. And I love them. And I was worried that the guy that did Pineapple Express was doing this. <laughs> uh. I was a little, I, I was a little upset that they had such a small story with the uh, the Meat King. Yeah, yeah, because uh, he's a lot bigger in the book. Yeah. Uh, I was a little surprised, and this, it's been a l- couple years since I read. Was Hitler in the book? No. Because he never went to hell, Eugene, right? No, Eugene never went to hell. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, I don't think I missed that. I no. don't think I remember. No, they've they've changed the uh, they've changed the character of Jesse quite substantially. Yeah. I mean, he's still a preacher, and he still uses the voice, but they've changed his motivation and what he can do with the voice a whole lot. And they changed how him and the Sainted Killers interact. Yeah, because he used to have power over him in the books, right. and in the, in the show he yeah. didn't. But, well, yeah. until later. Yeah, until Spoiler. Like, yeah. Okay, so you, I haven't read the graphic novels, yep. et cetera, but I've watched it, and uh, I've enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. Now, is it the, the reason that you like it so much is because it's familiar, it's familiar topics and characters for you, but you're liking it more because it, they're not rehashing the books directly themselves. It actually gives you new content and uh, new direction with the characters that you find enjoyable. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it's not like, oh, we need to rearrange this for it to make more linear sense, which, I mean, the books were pretty linear. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely, oh, we're going to make it kind of our own thing. Yeah. Some of the same similar themes. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's great. Uh, Lucifer has kind of been the, the same way. I've really enjoyed Lucifer, and I read the first trade, and it's nothing like it, but it's really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I've, Lucifer keeps getting talked about like how good it is. I've never, I've saw one episode. I liked it. I just never got back yeah. to it. It's it's good. It's an enjoyable like if you kind of have to like the police procedural. Mm. Um, if you like that kind of kind of stuff, it's 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 good in that respect. But then like the comedy and him being the devil and like his motivations in the show, it's it's really good. I really thoroughly enjoy it. I watched Castle for nine years, so I feel I can get through the police procedurals. <laughs> God, those last two years were awful. I, First seven was good. I did not watch that show. <laughs> NCIS Satan. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they did. It was New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Dev, thank you for yeah. being here. Anything else you want to talk about? We're pretty much open. Anything? I got nothing. I'm ready to go. I was actually looking at the line over there. It looks pretty short. I was going to go get some more beer. Go to our green room. <laughs> go to your green room. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Could you put Take a Hobie easy. sticker over there? <laughs> Take it easy, guys. That's it. Thank you. There's a Moana that just walked by. Moana? Yeah, Moana. There was one, did you see uh, yesterday? There was a uh, Stitch, a girl dressed as Stitch, and... There was a guy dressed as Mr. Bubbles, and he had the briefcase next to him. Cobra Bubbles? And it looked actually pretty damn good, both of them. Mm. I, was, I was like, you don't see that cool. often. Yeah. yeah. We saw somebody dressed up as, uh, was it the, the boy from Stranger Things? Did you see that? Really? I did not. Yeah. No, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, Deb was talking. The, the, he had the, the hat with the pine tree thing on his. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember which one. Oh, uh, Jason, when you weren't here earlier, we did see Gambit walk by. Oh. And we were waiting for your impersonation. Uh-huh, I am Gambit. That's all I got. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty tired. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been an exhausting day. It has been a long day. Uh, I would like to go walk the floor sometime today. <laughs> I don't think... Was that just where you disappeared to about 30 minutes ago? No, I went to go get my wife. Oh. <laughs> 
You know, it, it figures when people are gone, that's when people are coming up going, trivia, trivia, trivia. Then do it. Do it. Uh, there's some more people in robes graduating today. Uh, make sure you see that. All right. See that? Or is that Harry Potter? It's more Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Okay. My wife thought they were graduating. Harry Poppers. So, <laughs> Harry Poppers. Uh, anything else on Game of Thrones that you guys want to talk about? Yeah, so that's what Game of Thrones takes. <laughs> <laughs> you take it away, and he comes back. Dev is back. I am back. You're doing trivia, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're doing trivia. We just wrapped up the Game of Thrones talk with Preacher Talk. And uh, you are doing the fabulous trivia game. We get three out of five. Okay. Okay. And uh, we are doing wrestling. You have Jim there, who's a phone a friend. Okay. I don't know if he's going to be a friend, because he might be mean. He might buy a llama. <laughs> but, here we go. You ready? Get number one. Okay. Shoot, now I forgot the question. Uh, <laughs> the British Bulldogs won the heavy the tag team belts from what team in at WrestleMania 2? WrestleMania. Uh, this is a tough one. Not many people have gotten this one. Not no, many anyone has. No, uh... Fabulous Fruit. That was a good call. It was actually Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine. Ah. That was a good call. Good call. The Can-Am Connection was made up of Rick Martel and what other wrestler? Took the easy one out of that. You can phone a friend. Can-Am. Rick Martel. And... Would you like a clue? Yes. He's called the Z-Man. The Z-Man. Zebulon Pike. And that's not correct. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to phone a friend on this one. Jim? Jeff? I have no clue. Blake? I didn't even hear the question. Good man. Okay. <laughs> that would be Tom Zink. Tom Zink? I don't even yes. know who he is. Yeah, I've never heard that name. He did not go on too much after that. I've heard of him. Yeah. See, you should have asked it the other way. Okay. The Can-Am connection is Tom Zink and who else? No, 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 no. Rick Martel. Oh, the model. Uh, uh, For you, Rick Martel is okay. tough. But <laughs> at, a wrestle, at one of the WrestleManias, Rick Martel wore a blindfold against which wrestler in a blindfold match? They both wore blindfolds. I feel like I'm going really tough questions because even Jim's very qu- tough yeah, questions. Yeah, for you they're easy, but okay, fine. Don't okay, fine. Hulk Hogan beat who at WrestleMania three? Andre the Giant. Okay, there you go. There's one. He's on the board. Hey! <laughs> I just gotta get rid of the stuff in the t- Nicholas Cage bag. <laughs> uh, Jim, do you have a question for him? No. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, kid. When he joined the NWO, what was his name? When he joined the NWO? Yes, he flipped to the WCW. He left WWE. Went to the WCW. The NWO. So he had to use a new name. Jim, do you know this one? One, two, three, kid. Jim's helping. Seven. (laughs) Six? Um, Does Jim Jim have six fingers? (laughs) I... Mm. I was, well, I was going to say X-Pac, but yeah, because your guy was back to when he was back in the WWE yes, back as D-Generation X. So, yes. So, six, six, six Pac. Pac. Six is correct. Or it could be Six Pac. That's fine. That's fine. We finally were. Okay, okay, finally. Okay, must be catching up to me because okay. I totally saw an extra finger there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll do one more here. Okay. we got to think of a good one here. It's got to be a... Uh, it's got to be right across the uh, right across the plate. Okay, Super I'll do this easy. one. Do you like Roman Reigns? He has his moments. Do you like Roman Reigns? <laughs> I'm gonna say your answer would be no. Then you win. There you go. Good job. Well done. Well done. I almost drafted him in our league. <laughs> I know. I can't. I just can't. Okay. The creepy bag. Actually, no. I did draft him in our league. Did you draft him in our fantasy wrestling? League? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I did. Okay, there's a picture. Right. Oh, that's sexy. There's bees Come in on. there. Come on, sir. There's bees. <laughs> <laughs> the bees! The bees! Quest for Camelot, the cartoon. That's almost as good as the Serbian film. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like, I could trade. You can trade for one more. You want to try another no, one? No, no, I'm good. A non kids movie? I'm good. Because you're going to be kind of creepy walking around with that. <laughs> I've got the mustache. <laughs> it's not going to get much creepy. You do have the porn stash. Well, thank you, Dad, for playing. Oh, thanks for having like, me. I feel like we gave him some easy ones. 
I feel like he gave him some incredibly hard ones to begin with. To start with, the first two were incredibly hard. The Z-Man, Tom Zink. That, that's He's the Paul Roma of <laughs> tag teams. I was only thinking Larry Zabisco. I was like, it wasn't him. Larry Zabisco. <laughs> <laughs> Take a bow, Larry. You deserve it. No, no, you don't, you piece of crap. God. Were you upset by Bobby Heenan dying? Yeah, I mean... Let's, let's be honest, it, he was pretty rough there at, he was, at the he end with the, uh, he had the, what, jaw cancer. Yeah, for 10 years, for 12 years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah he, was, uh, he was in he was in rough shape, Yeah. but it was still sad to see him go, because he was still super, super sharp. I still remember him in the dog catcher outfit when he went against, him and the Islanders teamed up with Bull, against Bulldogs and Coco <laughs> Beware, and he was afraid of Matilda the dog, so he dressed in the, <laughs> the stuff. The, oh, nice. Hey, do you have any other questions? Any, any questions for wrestling, Jeff? For wrestling? I have no wrestling. Questions. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jason is away from the table. He's uh, showing his wife around. So this is time we decided we're going to talk about some Dungeons & Dragons. Because next week, Blake is going to be running for Jim, myself, and a couple other friends of ours. And I know... Dev plays. Yes. I, I've heard, at least when you rolled up your characters that one time. Yeah, where we uh, dropped the highest instead of the lowest yes. on the roll. Yeah, that was real, that was real <laughs> stupid. Uh, I was so <laughs> looking forward to hearing <laughs> stupid. So looking forward to hearing the adventure. Uh, I was, I'm a terrible DM. You don't want to hear it. It was a lot of me going, uh... Yeah, you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering you're weaker than the norm, most normal people, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we did have this rule that if you died and you took a shot, you could come back. All right. So, so oh, are we going to institute that rule? <laughs> if you buy me a shot, <laughs> if you buy me a shot, then maybe you can come back. <laughs> no, but, you know, that's actually an interesting concept. Nor- normally when... I roll up a campaign and stuff. And it's always, you know, to, you know, throw four dice six, drop the lowest, and that way you're hoping with above average characters because it's a lot more fun when you're, yeah, when you're a lot stronger, you're a lot you're stronger, successful. smarter, and successful <laughs> to do things. But you know, there have been uh, there have been times when when people have had less than good scores, and you're like, all right, let's just scrap it. But you would like to do something one time where you're encouraging lesser scores. Where you drop the highest novelty yeah. thing that you did, and then that way, I think with more experienced players, you know, I think you can come up with a better, you know, story and how you react, right. and think of ways to overcome things. Well, even you know, even the weakest ca- uh, characters in the monster manual that I could find yeah. still could easily kill anybody that was playing. <laughs> yeah, kobolds and goblins are they're still pretty dangerous to yeah. first level characters. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of walking, a lot of living vines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> dire rats. Yeah. Damn them, dire rats. <laughs> yeah. The best thing to do with dire rats is to catch them on fire, light them on fire, and throw them at other things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which they have done. Yes. <laughs> and to mop up cow traps. <laughs> Roll them yes. to the cow traps. Yes. The <laughs> dire rat corpse is good for uh, getting all the cow traps out of your way. <laughs> nice. Unfortunately, Especially when, when there's 48 goblins on the other side of the cow crops, that's not too good. Now, see, I, I play with the theory that you just can't go from room to room, open the door, have that encounter in the room, then close that door, open the next door, have the encounter in the room. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you're, the bad guys are intelligent, too. Even though they may not be as smart as you, they still have some level of intelligence. Right, right. <laughs> You know, so I, I don't, you know, that's one thing I don't like about Skyrim is you can go into a place, clear out a room, just walk five feet in the next one and have a full combat again. Right. It doesn't make sense. You're making noise. So, yes, <laughs> they were moving through the dungeons and they open up a door and they see a couple of goblins hidden behind a barricade. So they close the door real nope. quick. <laughs> <laughs> Close the door, and then proceed to take about 10 to 15 minutes of strategizing time on how they're going to attack. And then when they open up the door again, there are like 46 goblins. It <laughs> does make more sense. <laughs> Waiting for them to come in. So, playing completely aborted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not completely. We did throw the uh, burning dire rats at them. <laughs> They did eventually survive that. Yeah. It was rough. 
I like. I actually think I like that gaming strategy more, where it's like more realistic to what you would expect. Like, yeah. like, even even if you've got like a negative one or two intelligence as a uh, as an NPC, I mean, they should still be able to figure something out. I mean, they should at least be able to stumble on an answer. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and I like that concept. And I, and I you know, since it was, it was, it was basically a, a first introductory phase to the entire campaign, anyways. Yeah. So that they can they can understand how I do things. Yeah. You know, and, and I can I get a feel for how they play and come up with strategies, and so they can understand how, what I do. Right. And right. so now that we've been through this feeling out period, you know, we're about ready to go full on. I think. So what version do you guys play? 3.5. I still like the, the 3 3.5 because I, everything I've got is all set up for that already. Gotcha. Okay. You, so you, know, you already own it. You don't want to yeah. have to start over again. Yeah. I, I, I've I've bitched several times on the episode about how they ruined everything with 4.0 and, <laughs> and then they realized they made that mistake and decided to cut back some bit and go back yeah. to the 5th five, fifth edition which, you know... I think that is, was part of our problem. We because we were in the comic shop and they had they just released the 5th edition and we were trying to play yeah. with the 5th edition and not really anybody having any experience with it it turned into a real shit show and yeah. also the fans uh, decided to vote me as the dungeon master not being good at all with writing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I you know I the, the way I, the the biggest beef I had with that and, and actually talking to you from the retail side, you know a lot of times what really rejuvenated D and D was the fact that they uh, made it open license. Yep. So everybody can produce um, products for it, and what where they really burnt a lot of the retailers were the fact that um, they closed that down and decided to reboot to fourth edition without basically telling anybody right. so all these retailers were stuck with tens of thousands of dollars of 3.5 edition uh, books and materials to sell which, which now they had to get rid of at discount prices because right. it came up and so they burnt a lot of bridges that way and then when 4th fell on its face and fans of the 3.5 moved on with keeping Pathfinder alive yep. and keeping basically 3.5 yeah. Uh, 3.75. Yeah. You know, the, the, the D20 system. Yeah, the yeah. D20 system. They, I think they realized they made that mistake, went back to the fifth, dumbed it down, and uh, went with the simplicity. And then, oh, by the way, we need some open open licensing again in order to get people to buy right, all right. the books. Because, you know, when you're a big fan and you're buying all these books, the closing 30 minutes. And you buy all those books and you spend all that money on that right. product and then you decide right. to screw off and do a new one. You get pissed. Yeah, and I right. was. I was pissed. You mean like relaunching a comic series every three months with a new number one? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much when I stopped comics when at the exact same time DC and Marvel both said, we're starting yeah. over. It's like, yeah. you just did New 52 like three years ago. What do you mean you're starting <laughs> over again? Yeah. It, it loses its special, but what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It loses its special uniqueness, I guess, yeah. when you keep yeah. doing something like that. Right. So have you guys uh, tried doing, like, uh, anything online with, like, Roll20 or anything like that? Actually, uh, I use D20 Pro, the virtual okay. tabletop. Okay. And um, I don't use the latest and greatest version because they're still working out the kinks with their new stuff that they've got built up into it. But uh, I, I like using that as my virtual tabletop. And we we set it up when we play. So when we when we play, we have a player PC with the big TV on top. Okay. But um, I do like it this way. Yeah. So I don't use the newest version of D20 Pro because they're, they're working out all the kinks and they're making fifth edition and they're making it almost exclusively so we can program any game into it, not just yeah. you know D and D. So it's working out pretty well. And I like it. You can simplify things. Like we use it in online when I played online with people from New York, Columbus, California, Wisconsin. Or what I like using is the big HD TV in the living room. We hook up the player's you know computer with the HDMI cable, and you can see you know a big big fun virtual table board 
you know, for encounters and combat and all that kind of fun stuff. So everything awesome. can be pre-programmed, or you can still make them roll dice. Yeah, that's awesome. You have to roll the dice still. Right? Yeah, you had <laughs> NPCs can, don't have to roll dice, but I I need the the, the dice ball. I need to roll my three all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Three are your ones. Yeah, my ones. Yes. I'm gonna jump on this table. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got one. <laughs> He's had some great ideas. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the executions come out rather comically. I think you need, not I think you need to check your uh, your dice. <laughs> Make sure they're not <laughs> weighted. <laughs> Wait, he did give me those dice. <laughs> oh, that's what's going on. <laughs> I thought I'd use my own, and I thought a lot better. That's right, I gave him the gag dice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it, it's, a, it's a fun time. I, I, I like, you know, as we're, we're talking off mic, you know, shortly, I, I've learned that I like to run campaigns more than be a player character these days. So what uh, what species and... Uh, are we class. running? Yeah. Do, well, do you prefer and that you're currently running? Uh, I've never had a preference. I just like to do something I hadn't done before. Yeah. So currently, I am running a human uh, favored soul, which okay. is a, a cleric spinoff or whatnot. Okay. I've never run uh, one so of guys, those before. Do you guys do homebrew type stuff? Uh, homebrew? Yeah. It depends what it is. I'm not. I'm not negative to anything. Okay. As long as it makes sense and it fits into the campaign, I you know I could would pretty much let everybody you know do what they like. Gotcha. You know, but there there may be times where I may try and you know massage people in certain directions. Gotcha. But I'm not opposed to something that's different. You know, but uh, the, the bulk of my art player characters or that I've always had were your know, basic one of the mill basic, you know, character races and right. classes, you know, that you can get out of, like, complete divine, complete fighter or something like those lines. But uh, I'm always open to anything as long as it doesn't, as long as it makes sense and is not completely out of the ordinary. Okay. You know. Like you can't be walking trees. <laughs> like you can't be walking trees named Jason Brigger. Yeah, I'm, I'm just newly getting back into the game, so I went back to the uh, my old uh, favorite, uh, the, the slashing uh, fighter. So I'm a dwarf barbarian. Oh. So I'm, I run in, get beat up, fall over, and get have to get healed <laughs> and healed again. <laughs> But, but, you, but you know what's great about that? The unsafe, you know, I should say, no, I don't want to say unsuccessful. I would say the lack of current success. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is a great character builder thing to run with. Right. <laughs> you know, but the other things that we have are we got a, you know, elven druid and we have a uh, half orc fighter. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so we have, you know, four, four core player characters. Okay. We're just going to be in trouble when we need thief skills. <laughs> <laughs> we try. <laughs> Check for traps. No traps. <laughs> Boom, trap goes off. <laughs> as you're checking for the trap, or as you try to... Oh, we never found the oh, trap. So. No, we found the trap. I'm looking yeah. for trap. Nope, no trap here. Okay. Boom. <laughs> I looked. It wasn't there. <laughs> That's right. You looked and it wasn't there. You didn't see it either. <laughs> That's right. That's the whole point. <laughs> Awesome. That's what has flavor. <laughs> yeah, the last time I played, I uh, well, I talked about it here. I was a uh, or off mic talking about uh, talking about this, and that's what brought up the conversation. And I was a uh, anthropomorphic ape that had a plus twelve modifier to strength. Before you rolled the character. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um, go a little homebrew with Yeah, that. yeah. So it was, uh, it was, it was a crazy character. The DM did not like it, um, but I, uh, I don't know why he didn't like it. I mean, I spent most of the time just like, uh, I'm gonna roll to jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> You were a unsuccessful. <laughs> and you ripped your dick off. <laughs> I am going to yeah, no, some I, poo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was fun. Uh, it was very frustrating for uh, for the DM. Like, oh, you're just so strong. You don't really need to do anything other than just like, I, I'm going to swat at this guy. <laughs> and, oh, he's, right. he's dead. <laughs> Slam. Yeah. Slam attack. 
That sounded more like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle <laughs> character or a Gamma World well, character. Well, he said we could basically do whatever we wanted, uh, and he gave us, like, you know, some requirements of, like, it had to be a normal uh, progression-type character. It couldn't be, like, because uh, I wanted to originally do a Warforged, which is like a... Wood like plate. a steel golem. Yeah, um, I was I was doing the, the more the wood like the the natural type thing, and uh, he's like, oh no, you can't do that because it, it levels up. Like you go from like level one, and then to do the next level, it's like you have to go three levels. So it wasn't a, a straight uh, straight progression. Straight so, character level progression. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, okay, well then. Uh, I want to be a I want to be a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, all right, well, there's there's a way to do it, but uh, so I, so I we seen all of the apes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was fun. I I miss I miss doing that. Uh, they all live down two hours away, so we don't get together enough to do that. But maybe someday. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, got, we're we taking advantage. Yeah, we're taking advantage of it while you were out. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's great. So I miss yeah, it. I did miss it, and then we started doing it <laughs> about once every four months. But <laughs> it's fine. Oh, okay. That's normal. That's normal. That's normal. I see. Unfortunately, for our listeners, I'm the one that's sitting in front of the uh, the Mac, and a lot of the, the fuzzy, wavy things aren't moving the way I thought they were supposed to. That I didn't know if I messed something up. No, nope, it looks to be going fine. Okay. But uh, yeah, I suppose that is our talk on Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Now that Jason's yeah. back, we can go back to talking yeah. about walking. All right, we got uh, some more trivia here. We're going. Uh, Philip is going to play some Marvel trivia. Awesome. Uh, Phil, if you get uh, three out of five right, you get to draw something from the Nicolas Cage bag, the creepy Nicolas oh. Cage bag. We've got some. The bag is the winner. Fabulous prizes in there. The bag is the real winner. But uh, so you can win something from there. Um, and you want Marvel? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, so we'll start off. We'll start off with an easy one here. The Fantastic Four have headquarters in what building? The Baxter Building. The Baxter. I don't even need to give the choices. And the Baxter Building is correct. They've also been in Four Freedoms uh, Plaza. Uh, oh, Peter Parker works as a photographer for the Daily Bugle. The Daily Bugle. This one should have been easy ass Uh Thor has two war goats to pull his chariot. They are named. Uh, is there any choices? There on are that? choices here. We've got <laughs> Balder and Hermod. Thunder and Lightning, Ask and Embala, Tooth Grinder and Tooth Nasher. It sounds too obvious, but I'm going with Thunder and Lightning. Thunder sure and Lightning, wrong. and it is incorrect. Yeah. It was Ask and Embala. All right. Before becoming Radioactive Man, Chen Lu was A, a spy. B, a nuclear physicist, C, a soldier, or D, a pilot? Radioactive man? Radioactive man, yes. Um, a scientist? Uh, nuclear physicist? Yes. That is correct. I pulled that one out of my butt. All right, and... Shield's highest ranking agent is A. Nick Fury, B. Steve Rogers, C. Peter Parker, or D. Natalia Romano. Rom- ah. Romanova. It's uh, Nick Fury. It is Nick Fury. And you got four out of five, so you do get to pick from the, the bag of Nick Cage goodness. Awesome. So reach in without looking. And finds a prize in there. And we got 
at <laughs> the movie Life as a House. <laughs> It's a movie that Hayden Christensen actually was good in. Oh. So, you, <laughs> so you can watch a, a, a Hayden Christensen movie that that he can act, nice. sort of. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Oh, thanks for playing. Is there anything you want to plug? You mentioned something about you got your own. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got a I've got a podcast. It's called um, RSRG Entertainment. It's um, a podcast that takes place on the Earplug Podcast Network. You can find us at rsrgentertainment.com or earplugpodcast.com. And uh, what do you guys discuss on that? Um, it is a pop culture show. Um, it's really random, whatever I want to... I, I made it as a random show so I could talk about kind of whatever, but generally we stick to comics, movies, all, all your general pop culture, sometimes a little sports if the season All right, for it, that, that sounds pretty similar to what we do here, so our fans will be aware of that. Awesome. So uh, thank you for uh, playing, and uh, yeah, guys, give, give his uh, podcast a listen to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope so. <laughs> Test, testing, one, two. Test, testing, three, four. Test, testing, five, six. And we're back with some trivia, and we are with Paul. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. You wanted to do Star Wars trivia, because who doesn't want to pick out the Nicolas Cage creepy bag? <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to shuffle these up. We're going to Star Wars. And you can phone a friend. Okay. So, if you need it. Who was described as a noisy brute? You got... You got uh, multiple choice if you want it. It's Lando, Chewbacca, Han Solo, or Luke Skywalker. A noisy brute? Yes. It was Chewbacca. You are correct. That is one. <laughs> uh, let's see. What did Yoda tell Obi Wan Kenobi he felt in Luke Skywalker? Much fear, no commitment, much anger, or daydreaming? Daydreaming. That's what he felt in Luke Skywalker? How long have I watched this one? Always his eyes to the horizon, to the future. Uh, never his mind on where he was, what he was doing. Adventure, excitement, Jedi craves not these things. I don't remember this one either. What were my options again? Uh, fear, much fear. No commitment. That was Anakin. Uh, much anger. And daydreaming. I will avoid, I will say daydreaming is not correct. Yeah. So it would be fear, much fear, no commitment, or much anger. So I'm not afraid you will be. And no, will he be. The question is, will he finish what he begins? Is it no commitment? It is much anger. Oh, that anger. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Where did Obi Wan uh, Kenobi tell Luke Skywalker to go? Back to Echo Base, to Dagobah. The Dagobah system. There you go. That's two out of three. There you will learn from Yoda, the Jedi Master who instructed me. I'm impressed. <laughs> Who was suffering from delusions of grandeur? Grandeur? Grandeur. grandeur. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's early. I'm out for a little while. Everybody's I... delusions of grandeur. It's Luke Skywalker. His Han doesn't believe he's really well, a Well, hold on. According to C-3PO. According to C-3PO. Okay, you ready? Han Solo, Chewbacca. You know, delusions of... R2-D2. R2-D2, that is correct. That is three. Would you like to just see if you could get four out of five? Okay. We'll do it here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Jeez, or peace, that's not happening. <laughs> what is an at at vulnerable point? It's sensor array, it's neck, it's drive motor, or one of its escape hatches? Luke cuts open the escape hatch to throw the thermal detonator in, mm-hmm. so I'm going to go with the escape hatch. It's actually its neck. The neck? I don't know. Oh, that's right, because the armor is thickest at the neck. That's why the snow speeders couldn't kill it, because they could have come down from above. They had to trip it up and make it fall over so they could actually target it. I did not believe it was a neck. I did not know that. Did you? <laughs> that there was a neck? No, I knew it was a neck. <laughs> that was a horrible point. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, the armor was thickest at the neck. The, uh, the speeders couldn't target it. I just... <laughs> okay, here we go. 
Nicholas Cage grab bag. Now don't look. Right. There's some really good stuff in there. <laughs> There's lots of DVDs in there. This <laughs> DVD. The Hunger, the Hunger Games. Games. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you, sir, for playing. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was fun. We are back, and Jeff's brother Jim has bought a mystery box at the Sensei Comic Expo. It is pretty exciting. It's big, and it's orange. It's kind of like our Supreme Overlord. <laughs> and it's got question marks all over it. Yes, we were doing this live. Let's see. Jeff, would you like to open it? Jim, would you like to do the I'll pleasure? Get, I'll do the first reveal. Okay. Get, this is like hitting the mystery box in Mario. It I, is. I hope it's a star. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. So this is the video game mystery box? This or is the video game mystery box. What is in there? Pretty exciting. First, first thing... Space Invaders minifigure, mini alien vinyl figure. I guess that's not bad. That's not. Uh, I'll do the second pick. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong Yahtzee. <laughs> All right. So you're up to about five dollars back. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what we got in here. A mouse pad. Welcome to 1997. <laughs> Who is that? Anybody know that? I have no clue. Anyone? It looks like Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask, maybe? From Zelda? Yeah, it's from Zelda. Okay, what do you got here? It's pretty exciting. Look at this. Oh! Whoa! It is Saber Wolf, Killer Instinct collectible figure. <laughs> they don't know that. Nothing from Killer Instinct's collectible. <laughs> there better be more. It says collectible on the box. Oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, I don't know what that's from. It's an orc of some sort or a goblin. What's that from, guys? It's Pathfinder's Lick Toad Goblin. It's a Lick Toad Goblin. <laughs> okay. I think it's dead because it's uh, stuck in the plastic. Let's see. Wonders Mystery Box of Splendor. Classic console foam replica. Oh, okay. Don't break it. It's foam. I swear to God, if you break it, I will hurt you. <laughs> it's a foam Game Boy. Game Boy. <laughs> that might be the best thing. That's worth the money. <laughs> that is pretty fun. I like that one. You got more in there, Jim. Let's see what's next. <laughs> I feel like we got some good. Pro- on my uh, Facebook lives. Uh, bubble wrap. Yeah, this has got to be good. It's bubble wrap. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I was allowed to bring my sword in here, so I can't open it. <laughs> There's boots you can go buy. Okay. They're not sharp. <laughs> I like the Game Boy foam replica. That, that's kind of fun. If anybody wants to know, there's the UK belt. WWE doesn't care about it, so they just gave it to us. <laughs> yeah, nobody cares about the UK belt. Vince has got bored. What do you got over there? It's wrapped. This has got to be worth millions. At least. <laughs> At least. It's a glass. <laughs> Don't break it. What we got? Eventually we'll find it. <laughs> this, this is a pretty good suspense. It's still opening. This is going to be the worst <laughs> reveal ever. Jeff, keep going. What do we got right there? Well, he's opening that. Don't get yourself on YouTube. Uh, a Domo Series 5. Uh, yeah. A 2-inch Quee collectible figure. It's a Domo. Whatever that is. I don't know what that is. That was all for that? It, the, re- the final review of that reverse, it's a fallout glass. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else in there, Doug? Yeah, there's more in there. Dear God. Uh, we got that. There you go. More fallout. That's an air freshener. Yes! Fallout air freshener? That's it. And that's it? That's everything. 
These are not the toys you're looking for. <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> Did he take it back and get a different one? <laughs> oh, it's a coupon. Oh, 10% off. Anything at <laughs> toynk.com. Use this mystery code. I am so not using that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty, uh, pretty good box. <laughs> I can't wait to use this mouse pad for the uh, computer I don't have. <laughs> we all know that you need a mouse pad for a laptop. Put that on top of your laptop and see if it works. <laughs> it's not doing anything. <laughs> 1987 called. The killer instinct is kind of nice. I, I mean, it's a big figure anyway. It's a big statue, that's right. I'm intrigued by that. I kind of like the Game Boy foam. I like that. <laughs> I think the little Domo is probably the cutest thing in there. But you would have to. It won't be collectible if I open the box. I like. Jim, don't open the box of the Killer Instinct Saber Wolf. You're just going to lose value. You can open this box because it. Because you can close it. I don't know. <laughs> Doug, was it worth $65? No, it was for me. Yeah, for, for him, yes. <laughs> for this awesome reveal, yes. I feel bad. Um, I don't. <laughs> I feel, what the hell is that? You got a statue down there? Here, Jim, I feel bad. Keep your money. <laughs> I'm giving you $3 towards it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's sixty-two dollars now. It is a cool figure. It is a cool figure, actually. The saber wolf. It's blue. It's a wolf. Uh, is anybody have? Has anyone played Killer Instinct in the last ten years? Has anyone heard of Killer Instinct? <laughs> it came out. I think the Xbox had it as an exclusive. So, uh -oh. Jim, where are you going to put that? Um. <laughs> hey, that's not about the mantelpiece. I think it's a nice white elephant Christmas present. <laughs> I don't know. That breaks the rules of spending more than five dollars. But on I got everything else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Game Boy foam is probably worth eighty-seven dollars. <laughs> so how many we got? How many things? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish. Nine, eight? I think it was. Nine. I think we each pulled three. Yeah. Okay, so each value was about seven dollars. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if this Fallout air fresher is worth seven dollars. <laughs> I think it might uh, bring the uh, thing down a little bit. Well, with this three dollars, you just uh, bought that air freshener. I don't want like the air freshener. <laughs> what does it smell like? Fallout? <laughs> Nuclear waste. <laughs> I feel like by the end of any convention, like on Sunday, the stench is going to get there. So you're going. I might need this for later today. <laughs> They just put that in to uh, cover up the stench of the crap in this box. <laughs> I mean, if you're coming down here, you should really buy a mystery box. Uh, they're a great organization. Uh, wait, they didn't give it to you for free. Never mind. We paid for it. You paid for this. Forget that. So, Jim, for $62. Well worth it. Well, well worth the entertainment. Yes. Uh, we did get one person on Facebook Live saying, Jim looks like he's struggling with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the glass was, is the glass, uh, or is that glass actually? It's actually glass. That's a positive. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. That's great. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm kind of stunned by the saber wolf. I, I'm kind of stunned. I don't know what to say. I mean, it is a really good quality of a of a statue. It looks like I just I wish don't I, know why. Yeah, but, but what I didn't notice earlier, it has exclusive in-game unlockables. So oh. now I have to go buy the game and play it to the, get the full value the of The problem this. is it's on the Xbox One, <laughs> so you have to spend $300. <laughs> this is how they get you, Jim. This one has an Xbox. Don't worry about oh, you it. you do? I don't have an Xbox One. I, the 360 is the last I have of Xbox. That's the last one that the Killer Instinct series should have been on, to be <laughs> but, honest But with the 360 you. plays... Oh, the Xbox One. No, no, no. no is no. that on the Xbox One or is that Xbox One? Is that what the unlockable is for? Well, I hope so. It's never been out before, unless it's on the Nintendo 64. 
Well, I mean, it might be for the first Xbox or the Xbox. It's never been on it. Xbox oh. One is uh, Killer Instinct. It's uh, finally uh, was exclusive to the Xbox One. It was never on the previous ones. Oh, I can get it on PC too. Oh. So with I can your laptop with your mouse pad. So I can use my mouse pad. Saber Wolf keeps getting attacked. <laughs> wow, Jim, thank you. That is that, that is wonderful. That reveal was great. Facebook Live liked it. Facebook yeah. Live. Uh, we did get another quote, Dev, from uh, Shot of History. He was recording this live on his Facebook page, and uh, the quote was, the Bengals suck, go Detroit. <laughs> Jim, my wife wants to know. She said, it's a lot of stuff. Are you pleased with it? <laughs> I, or, for the entire experience, I am pleased. <laughs> Do you think my wife would be okay if I bought the $194 one today? <laughs> no. No, I met your wife. No, she would not be pleased. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's a 70 pieces in the 194. What do you, uh, probably a lot of Fallout air freshers. Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering, you could get a whole podcast about that. 70, ep- 70 pieces? We, we wouldn't have to do any material. Come on. Could I do that as a, t- can I do that as a tax write-off? I, I think Probably. Yes, yes. You can just go ahead and write off your taxes. Uh, just don't take my word for it. That's right. <laughs> I'm not a tax <laughs> accountant, but I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I don't know what to do after all the excitement of the mystery box. Uh, uh, might, you check the outline. It might be nap time. It might be nap There's time. So much excitement, I, we can't get over that. Right, that is taking true. a nap. No, not you, Jeff. No. We're running the board. Well, you could always have Blake do it. Yeah. If we can find Blake. Where is Blake? I think we've lost him. He's into the crowd somewhere. I think he's in Dayton. He might be in Dayton. He might be. Uh, let's see here. I, I, seriously. So, Jim, you feel like with that mystery box, you at least got some big things. It may not be what you wanted, but at least you got some big things in it. I, it was really exciting. Okay. Okay. It was kind of exciting. People liked it on Facebook, so that's good. Bad Ideas Podcast. Uh, let's see here. We're still on episode 198, Jeff. Uh, yes, we are on 198. Okay. Uh, we're kind of all over the place. We really don't have a uh, uh, semblance of our storyline at uh, this whole week, uh, last couple episodes. Um, did we do listener feedback yet? We've done some. Okay. But there's other questions. Well, since we're recording this on partially on a Sunday, uh, let's see here. Uh, Doug did want to know, will the Sports Illustrated reporter Peter King vote this man in? For 12up.com, the Pro Football Hall of Fame released their class of 2018 nominees. There are some additions like Ray Lewis, Randy Moss, Brian Erlacher, and Steve Smith. Not the wide receiver from the Carolina Panthers. No, no. The, Ray, uh, the Steve Smith, the guy that just retired. I'm sorry. He uh, retired after playing six seasons for the Giants, Eagles, and Rams. He has to- a total of 12 touchdowns in his career, uh, and he has 2,600 receiving yards. Those are Hall of Fame numbers, I would say. So you're saying you think the guy is stupid enough to think he's voting for the wrong Steve Smith? Peter King is not smart, allegedly. Uh, he has no idea. Uh, he was going to vote for Darren Sharper uh, after the allegations came out and he was on trial, and then he got a lot of pushback, uh, so much so that he no longer takes comments on his articles for Sports Illustrated. So that means you shouldn't be writing for Sports Illustrated. Uh, that means he should not have a Hall of Fame vote, to be honest with you. He, but he is so knowledgeable about the sport of football and all sports in general that he should probably work for ESPN. He should. Well, ESPN did let 6,000 NFL analysts go. They still have 5,000, but... Yeah, they let the good ones go. <laughs> Trent Dilfer, come on. A- any of them that cost money, they let go. Actually, so. Dilfer wasn't bad. If you, <laughs> That's what you said, they let the good ones yeah. go. Uh, Ray Lewis... They let him go, so that was good. Well, they had to because he was probably going to kill somebody. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. 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 I think he's like O.J. Instead of O.J. Uh, being out there looking for his wife's killer, uh, Ray Lewis was looking for his white suit. <laughs> I, gu- I knew it was here somewhere. <laughs> I put it in this dumpster in Atlanta somewhere. He was Atlanta, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Allegedly, again, allegedly. allegedly. I don't want anything bad to happen. But what ESPN lost out on, Fox Sports just came in and scooped up anybody worth merit. Did Ray Lewis go to Fox Sports? 
Yeah, yes. Fox oh. Sports scooped up way too much stuff, though. Well, the worst person they scooped up was Skip Bayless. Yes. But they scooped him up before they fired everybody. Uh, well, they should never have scooped up Skip Bayless. Nobody should ever scoop up Skip Bayless. Unless you're throwing him out with a kitty litter. Rick Bayless, on the other hand, good chef. Oh. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I like that. Again, it's just a nomination. But how sad is that that he is up there for that? I guess. <gasps> Wait a minute, time out. Breaking news. Chris from 365 got a photo with Cal. Oh. Son of a bitch. Did he shake you and say strawberry jacuzzi? <laughs> and so did Kevin. Did you get an autograph? You can just get a picture? What they're not showing you is he signed both of their chests. Uh, how much is the picture? 40 for Cal. I think I might have to get a strawberry jacuzzi today. I think I might have to. Jeff, what do you think? If you want to. Well, you know, I feel like I, didn't, I wouldn't have been the guy that wasted the most money today. I did buy a mystery box. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have really something tangible to go home with other than a picture with I Cal. got a picture, <laughs> maybe. Of course, that's only on your phone, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he wants a Polaroid. <laughs> a Polaroid. <laughs> I, I might put it on my T-shirt. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, anything else uh, going on you guys want to talk about? We're uh, nearing the end of our episode, I think. Um, here, let's do this. Let's do a riddle me this. Jim's a big Riverdale fan. Oh, yes. It's so incredibly awful. Okay, so River, this is from Randall Holt again, 666. Draft Riverdale using characters from Kevin James shows. Kevin James shows. We're doing movies and TV shows that Kevin yeah, James shows. why ran. not? Why not? Any characters from those. All right, well, we got Betty. Veronica. Betty, Veronica, Archie, Jughead. Okay. And uh, let's do uh, Kevin. Kevin. And one more. Um, are we doing uh, Mrs. Grundy? Or are we doing... Nah. No, uh, How about... Uh, who's the... Uh, Je- uh, Reggie? Is he the football player? Reggie's yeah, football Reggie's player. player. We're doing Reggie. Is he really in it? Yeah. He yeah. had like two episodes of the first five I watched. And He'll be fine. He, he shows up occasionally. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in the background, they're rebuilding the Millennium Falcon. Jim bought that, too, the $700 uh, uh, Millennium Falcon Lego piece. So they're putting it together by an air compressor. <laughs> so, so we're not picking any of the parents, like no, Luke no. Perry or... Fuck those parents. So, and who's Kevin in Riverdale? That's uh, he a guy. Oh, okay. He's the sheriff's son. Okay. So, okay, um... Well, I was I just messed up my first pick. I was going to do Kevin. I was going to do uh, David Arquette, and then I realized from Scream, <laughs> the, co- the, the cop, and I was yeah. like, that's not Kevin James. That's Show. Moving on. Kevin <laughs> James at all. No. Uh, Betty. Betty. Who are we going with that, her? Hmm. I think uh, Le- Leia Remini Leia from, Remini uh, Remini. from uh, King of Queens. Oh, yeah, because Betty's kind of annoying. In and that Psycho. Show. Yeah. yeah. Well, Leia Remini also on his new show. And also in real life as a Scientologist. Ex Scientologist. Ex Scientologist. Okay, so that's Leia Remini. Or, or we're doing characters, not actors. Yeah, her so character. It's actually, uh, Carrie? Carrie. Carrie. Carrie Heffernan. Okay. Yeah. Carrie. Okay. Okay. Uh, Veronica. I'm uh, trying to think. Uh, what's her name from Hitch? Oh, Eva. Yeah, Eva Menendez. Eva, Eva Mendez. Mendez. Not Menendez. <laughs> She's not one of the Menendez brothers. I was thinking of the polar bear from the Zookeeper. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> uh, I could do. I could do Eva. Or Selma Hayek from uh, Grown Ups. Oh. <laughs> Which one? I like Eva. I like Eva. I can go with, I that. Go with Eva, that. Eva? Okay. Eva Mendez. Not a Mendez. Uh, Amanda. We got Archie. We got Archie. Hmm. So, like, Jerry Stiller's character from King of Queens? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are you saying Archie is older than he appears to be in maybe, real life? Maybe. <laughs> But everybody in that show is 47 years old. It's true. That is true. Um, that's a tough one for Archie. 
Uh, what else was Kevin James in? We could do Will Smith from Hitch. We could do Hitch. Um, we could, but I don't I'm know. I'm just trying here, people. I know. I'm trying. We, we, we could do David Spade or Chris Rock or Adam Sandler. Or David Spade is never the answer. I, I say Steve Buscemi. I like it. Uh, we're going Steve Buscemi. Okay. And what movie is that from? It's also Grown Up. She was grown in up. Grown up. It was in probably about five or six movies with uh, all those Sandler movies. Oh, the Sandler films. They're all in together. Okay, Jughead. Who are we doing for Jughead? Hmm. Now we're doing the Riverdale Jughead. He's annoying. Patton Oswalt? That could be a good one. I like Patton Oswalt's character from uh, King of Queens. King of Queens. I'm going. I approve. Okay. So as of now, we got Carrie as Betty, uh, Eva Menendez character from Hitch as Veronica, Steve Buscemi's many characters as Archie, he doesn't have abs, and Patton Oswalt's character from King of Queens as Jughead. I like it. I like it. Uh, for Kevin, we need Kevin. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of other Kevin James. Uh, Paul Blart Markov, he was in Pixels. How about uh, Peter Dinklage? That'll work. I like Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage's character from Pixels. Yeah. Peter Dinklage can make anything good. Except is, Pixels. Except Pixels. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And finally, Reggie. Reggie. Of course, That's Evan. Kevin James. Time out. Time out. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, the character of Kevin. Thank God we never went to I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry. We did not get to those characters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kind of. That set back the... Uh, Head of the uh, homosexual industry about 87 years. Industry? No, no, no homosexual no. industry. <laughs> Those people make money because they're gay. Every oh, person. damn you, Adam Sandler. So Kevin James is, art is uh, Reggie? I, I say from what, uh, the wrestling movie? Oh, Here Comes the Boom? Here Comes the here Boom. Comes the boom. <laughs> <Here> comes the <laughs> That'll work. Okay. There you go. I hope you're happy, Randall. I'm not, but there you go. Uh, I, I do like the uh, Steve Buscemi as uh, Archie. As Archie. I think that's the best and only good pick we have. It might be the only good pick we have. <laughs> and to wrap things up on day three here, uh, since I Comic Expo, uh, upcoming movies for October 20th. Ooh, Halloween's coming. Uh, and nothing scarier than the prospect of seeing this movie, Geostorm. What do you mean, scary? This is a great movie. It's about satellites that control the weather. Wait a minute, we're right next to the Cobra. Right next to Co- I mean, they actually have a movie where they build a working weather machine. It's the satellites that control it. Yeah, that's part of a machine. Uh, and somebody hijacks it. The U.S. government's had this technology for, technology years. for years. George Bush used it and caused Katrina. If you, call, if you talk to Kanye, that is true. He doesn't like beat them. Uh, let's see. Uh, October 20th, Geostorm. Uh, Only the Brave? I have no idea what that is. Anyone? Anyone? No. Only the Brave. Same kind of diff- uh, same kind of different as me. No. I'm going to say no just because it's a hard title to say. I think that title sounds great. The plot is, I think, right there in the title. What is it? Well, it's the same kind of different as me. Okay. People uh-huh. are different, but they're the same kind of different. Oh, that's very deep. I know. That's deep. That's I deep. don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, has anyone seen previews for The Snowman? Is that the horror film? No, it's the mystery thriller. No. It looks damn good. I don't know um, about it. It's about a serial killer, and uh, I forget, he's killing women, and there's a guy that, uh, I think, abducted them and killed them, and I can't remember who the main star is, but he's hunting them down, and he was retired for a while and then get back into it, but he only kills when it, when it snows in that area, and he leaves like a little snowman everywhere he goes. It looks pretty damn good, actually, the trailer. I can't believe it's set in L.A., too. Yes. <laughs> Once every 75 years, this man kills. You think it's the same guy? Yes. It's got to be the same guy. <laughs> got to be. I saw his walker prints in the snow. He has little tennis balls on it. Is it the character from Up? <laughs> we never found out what happened to the boy. <laughs> the one character. Oh, poor Russell. The issue I had with Up is Russell, he goes away, and like his mom's never put an APB out for this kid. Nah. <laughs> you talk about 
about bad dad that never picks the kid up? What about bad mom that doesn't report her kid missing? No, she knew. It's like the case he was in his story. Was out trying to get his badge. She knew that. For seven days? Well, it, sometimes it takes a while. <laughs> I don't know. Your wife is actually really happy she doesn't have kids this weekend. She could have left them anywhere. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm out, but you see ya. <laughs> you go get your badge, I'll see you in seven days. <laughs> and if you don't get your badge, don't bother coming home. That's right. <laughs> what is this, Orange is the New Black? <laughs> have you seen the last, last season, Jim? I, I, I'm just one season behind. Oh, okay. The new season, uh, the one uh, lady that helped bury the body in the uh, yeah. garden, who is awesome. Uh, in this season, they show her background, and basically it's the same thing. Her dad leaves her in the woods because she ha- she has to learn to survive. <laughs> she leaves her a knife, water. He leaves her a knife, water, and something else. So, okay. So there's uh, episode number one ninety eight, and uh, we'll be back again. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Addendum titles for the show. All right. Uh, I only got a couple that I have written down. Okay. I got hijacking by yourself. Okay. And the homosexual industry. I have what's in the box. What's in the box? Oh, I do like that. Hey, what's, what's in, in the, the box? box? Or just Gwyneth Paltrow. You know what? <laughs> you have a better box than Brad Pitt did. <laughs> I did not have somebody's head in the box. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's head. So, uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's it's, in the box? It's what's in the box. 